It's been a long road since the original kicker christened that first pickup truck. It kicked off a car audio renaissance, and upgrading your music in a vehicle was a requirement. America's Music Machine became live and loud over your passion, your emotion, your existence. Outdoors or on the open road, your sound is kicker. It's the Kip and Dave Show. Hmm, excitement. Are you ready? <laughs> 22. Me, me, me. We're doing it one more time. We're going to do another one. We're going to do this right this yeah. time. We can, we can, we can. Check. I'm Smeatlish. Smeatlish. Camera adds 27 pounds. Okay. It just seems like a, a, a I know, rough it's, tra- it's, it's just it's kind of, yeah. This is Dave. And Kip. Come check us out. out. This is Kip. And Dave. And I got it wrong again. And we're going to have to do this again because we both on a different trail. <laughs> Until then, this is Dave. And Kip. Come check us out. C- c- come check us out. Yeah. Wiki, 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 wiki. I think that's good. <laughs> just pick one. God, I hate the ending. There's no way to yeah. end this. Just say, come see us. Come. T- just come see us. And just come see us. So. Come see us at the extra, Come see us at the two locations. God, I, it just seems so hard. Oh, <laughs> howdy. Delmar Hogwall up here coming to you from outside Mildred's Bake Shop in Lingerie. I want to appreciate you all coming, giving a look-see in on the Kicker Unmasked show those folks at Kicker, salt to the earth, make some of the finest gear ever tickle your ear. So, mighty fine of you to come take some time off and check them out. And remember, whether you're looking for night crawlers or nighties, Mildred's is your place. So once again, thank, hey, what? Hey, son, put down that armadillo and get some pants on. Oh my lord, kids. <laughs> Music is my passion, my livelihood, and it's in my DNA. My pals at Kicker Marine Audio gave me a chance to take the music what I love and listen to at home, on stage, and in the car, onto the water. Hi, this is Jason Bonham, and I want to say a big thank you to my friends at Kicker Audio for inspiring the songs and the stories behind the music that inspires America. Go overboard! The Kicker Quad Box is the most insane, ground-pounding, bass-head-loving, preloaded subwoofer enclosure we have ever offered. It consists of four L7R 12-inch subwoofers. It has a total power handling of 2,400 watts RMS, and it's tuned at an amazing 31 hertz. Here to tell us more about it is Kicker's very own Jeremy Brown. Hi, my name is Jeremy Brown. I've been with Kicker for 22 years. I work in the research and development department. In the early 2000s, I would run the Gates Bronco at shows like Daytona. We would do hair tricks, 48 10-inch subwoofers with 48 1,000-watt amplifiers. Really big build back in that day. 
We were able to develop some high output enclosures that were up above the 170 dB mark. We set a few world records with some of those enclosure designs and our woofers. We learned a lot about high output enclosure designs during that time, and we've been able to bring that to our product lines today. Within the last year, we introduced a new subwoofer enclosure with four L7R12s that we call the Quad Box. Our Quad Box is built out of three quarter inch birch. It's got a one and a half inch baffle and a one and a half inch bottom. We also use window frame bracing along with corner bracing to make the enclosure more rigid. We use a flared port to reduce port noise and increase port surface area. This type of vent design helps maximize output. We use the L7R 12 inch subwoofers because this allows you to use one KXA 2400.1 amplifier and you still get big bass with fewer upgrades to your charging system. The Kicker Quad Box is the bass head starter kit. And if you're worried, it plays way below 40 hertz. Do not attempt to adjust this transmission. We have assumed control. The year is 1980. Music fights for its very survival in an acoustically desolate wasteland man calls automobile. Enter Steve Irby, a man whose love of music helped end this scourge forever and forge a path for modern car audio to follow. A humble musician with a passion for quality sound, Mr. Irby is a man who feels it is his destiny to provide a sanctuary for mobile audio. Welcome. Join us this evening as we venture back to the very night a young Steve Irby gains his inspiration to create the legacy we know today as Kicker Performance Audio. Though he does not realize it now, by this time tomorrow, Mr. Irby will have completed blueprints for the original kicker and champion the war against mobile audio inequality. Tonight, Mr. Irby's prayers will be answered as he begins his quest into the Q Zone. Kicker L7QB8. With roots dating back to Kicker's inception, Mr. Irby and his team of engineers have achieved an unrivaled level of design and functionality. With extraordinary base and a minimal footprint, the L7QB8 utilizes a seamless quarter inch extruded aluminum housing, allowing optimal internal air volume for the subwoofer. This exclusive design provides exceptional strength and stability. Like the original kicker, the L7QB8 incorporates a unique passive radiator to minimize required airspace while optimizing the efficiency and frequency response of the subwoofer. Opposite the passive radiator, the L7QB8 is equipped with the all new eight inch L7 square subwoofer. The 2016 L7 features an aluminum basket for exceptional strength and thinned aluminum heat sinks for efficient heat dissipation. Kicker's blue lace spider, solo cone 360 degree back bracing, and a laser etched comb brace combine as a single ultra rigid unit. The result is increased clarity, higher volume, and added reliability. The square cone features over 20% more surface area than round subwoofers. It's attached to a Santa Prince surround, then stitched to the cone for long life and durability. This surround features Kicker's patented rib corners, which fully dictates cone motion and extends surround life, 
At the base of the unit, a pair of custom form flanges integrate seamlessly with an extremely low profile mounting system, consisting simply of a mounting plate and bar. Once installed, the overall height of the enclosure is only nine and a half inches. This profile is small enough to work perfectly in countless trucks, sedans, and SUVs. Once again, Kicker sets a new standard with the groundbreaking design and unparalleled performance of the all-new L7 QB8. This is where Kicker started, right here, in this garage right back here. It was a great place, but just a little bit small. And uh, after about six months, actually, we got kicked out of here. My wife said there's entirely too much sawdust uh, seeping into the house from the garage. But uh, this was the beginning, right here, in the garage on 1412 Eastern Street, in this little house. Okay, here we are at Kicker location number two down on South Main Street in Stillwater, Oklahoma. And this is the little house that we moved into after we got kicked out of the garage. Here we are, kicker location number three. We spent about seven or eight years in this place. We moved from the little house right over here into the Quonset when we ran out of space. We had about 35 employees. Here we are, kicker location number four. This is up on top of the hill. It's a little bit windy here. But we spent the years from 1989 until about 2006 here, until we moved into our new facility.
everyone. It's Tuesday night, 7.30 Central Time. Kicker Unmasked Live Weekly is the show. Thanks for tuning in. If it's your first time here, we sure appreciate you spending a little bit of time with us. With us. If it's your return trip, we're glad you made it a thing to put on your Tuesday schedule. We try to make it worth the effort. You know, we talk about everything from Kicker products. We have special guests join us, hints, tips, applications. You name it, we're trying to cover on this show. At the end of the day, it's all about this for you guys. So again, if you have comments, suggestions, Things you'd like to see us cover on the show, as always, we need you to reach out. That email is to get a hold of Bill Frog, social at kicker.com. Love to get your comments, what you'd like to see on the show. Obviously, throw them into the feed. We get as many of those up on the screen as we can. We look at them and we process those. But, you know, really getting an email out to us, that guarantees that we can see that because sometimes there's a lot of comments and we just don't get to them all, even though we try to get to them all. So with that said, if it's your first time here, uh, all of the people, the repeat offenders who come to the show, they know that we've gotten in the habit of running a contest. It's only during the show. We kick it off right at 7.15. It runs until 8.30 Central Time. So keep that in mind when I talk about any time here, we're talking about Central Time Zones. And so right now, the uh, drawing for tonight, it's always kicker.fun, and then it's forward slash. We come up with some kind of unique word for it. And tonight's <laughs> really difficult. It's tour, T-O-U-R. So if you haven't registered, uh, for the contest yet, you have from now until 8.30 Central Time to get that done. Uh, we'll get you registered for tonight's giveaways and prizes that we're doing. Uh, and we got a little extra surprise we're going to give away during that time. It ought to be kind of fun. It's off the books. Something we wanted to do is kind of exciting. And we're going to give a shout out to our gal Sandy who made that happen for us. So that's going to be real fun at the drawing time. Speaking of drawings, uh, if you tuned in with us two weeks ago, you know we had the big show where we talked with uh, J.D. Vay um, from Hoppy Industries. And he gave us kind of a rundown of all the fantastic products that Hoppy Industries manufactures uh, for ATV and UTV use. And obviously they use a lot of kicker uh, speakers and amplifiers and source units in those applications. Uh, we talked J.D. and Denali showing us all the cool stuff they make, but he agreed to go ahead and do a four-week contest with us where we're actually giving away a Hoppy Audio Mini. And so if you haven't registered for that contest, you need to go win, uh, register for that one as well. And that's kicker.fun forward slash win a mini, one word, W-I-N-A-M-I-N-I. -I -I. Uh, it's actually running almost five weeks long. We call it a four week contest, but we're actually ending it on April 26th uh, at midnight central time. And then we will actually have JD on the show that very next day, that's Tuesday, which will be an unmasked live show. We'll have him on the show. We will draw the winner. And he'll off give us all the options that will be available. I know at the time we did that, there were like four different units available for the Audio Mini. Uh, but he told us then that they had other units that were coming. And so whatever's going to be available at the time of the drawing, you'll get to pick from that as your selection. So two contests tonight. If you're, if you're a first-time guy, first-time gal, go check that out. Kicker.fun forward slash tour. That's the contest for tonight. And if you didn't know about the drawing we're doing with Hoppy Industries, go check them out as well, hoppyindustries.com. And to enter that contest, it is just uh, kicker.fun forward slash win a mini. So that takes care of the contest we've got going on for tonight. And uh, I always want to bring this up and talk about it. You know, when we first started doing the Unmasked show, uh, it was just for domestic U.S. That was the only way we could really do prizes and giveaways. But we have since then reached out to our brothers across the border to the north and Jemson, who is our distributor up in Canada. They are working with us. And so now Canada is part of our drawing community. So if you find yourself to be from the land of really good beer, you can now enter the contest as well. It'll take us a little bit longer if you're a winner from the Great White North. It'll take us just a little bit longer to get your prize to you, but you are qualified and you can enter. And as always, we're constantly looking at how we can broaden the scope of that. So for right now, we're looking at Canada and domestic United States. That is who is uh, eligible to enter for our contest. So go check them out. I want you to enter. I want you to have a chance to win. Now, as always, you know, we're people, and sometimes we want to schedule trips and vacations and other things. Silly Bill Frog wants to take a vacation, I think, next week. Actually, I think it's the 25th through the 1st, I think is what he told me. So we have some people in training, and what I'd like to do is uh, let Ernie have a chance here. He'll uh, flip to the camera in the back. We actually have Bill back there, and he's training. Give us, hey, Jacob, give me a little bit of wave or thumbs up back there. So that is Jacob Lucky, and if any of you have had the opportunity to work with him over the phone, Jacob is one of our techs upstairs who handles all sorts of troubleshooting calls day in and day out, whether it's something you're having problems with or, you know, it's a pre-installation question or a pre-sale question. Jacob's one of the guys that does that. And of course, there's Bill Frog. Hey, Bill, give me a wave, man. Look away from the computer. Just there you go. Thank you, sir. And so Bill Frog's back there uh, manning the keyboard as usual on social, but he's actually bringing Jacob up to speed so that he can fill in for Bill Frog during vacation time. And there she is. There's Sandy. And, uh, you know, beside her, 
Uh, I like to call him Mr. Grumpy Face sometimes. That would be Mr. Jeremy Wynn. <laughs> And Jeremy's going to be taking some time away from us uh, for events, actually. And so with those two having to step out of the studio, we're actually bringing Sandy up to speed. She's going to be filling in for Jeremy's role. And as you can see, it's kind of cool to see the computer screens there. You know, Jeremy handles a lot of, of lower thirds and switching duties and stuff that happens on the Black Magic side of things back there in the studio, as well as the StreamYard feed that we output. And so he's bringing Sandy up to speed on that. So when both of them are gone, it ought to be a very interesting show because anything that can and will go wrong probably will. I recommend if you're in for some hilarious times that you definitely tune in during the next few weeks as we have some newbies here that we're getting them ready on the show. Sandy killing it already. I just saw that comment pop up, so that's a good one there. Speaking of that, if you have any great uh, comments or stuff there, I'd like for you to throw them up there, uh, Sandy or Bill or whoever's doing that job back there tonight. Or Maybe it's Jacob. I don't know who back there is actually doing work tonight. Uh, Deviant for Life, good to see you tune in. You're a regular coming in. Nice for tuning in. Thanks for hanging out with us. Bobby, Bobby was the first guy to have a, a comment posted in tonight's feed, and I think he did it like at 2 a.m. this morning or something. It was pretty silly how soon he got logged in here. Is Bill Frog, where y'all got the bullfrog <laughs> from? You know, Justin Kirby, uh, Bill Frog is actually, uh, Bill's name is Bill, and of course, Bullfrog's a product line. And when we did a, uh, maybe you've seen it, we've run the video in a lot of our teaser roles that we do in that first 15 minutes for the show. And so Bill Frog was born because Bill seemed like the right guy to put on the bullfrog suit and uh, shoot that video where we threw everything, including the kitchen sink hat at him up in our uh, infinity studio where we shot that. So that's why we call him Bill Frog. Uh, great dude. Uh, Bill's on top of our social media stats, analytics. Couldn't ask for a better guy to get that done, but that's why we call him Bill Frog. Uh, we mean it in the most fun and loving way. So yes, that is Bill Frog. Basehead 30, shout out to the whole kicker crew. Basehead 30, thank you. Alex Freeman, hi Sandy. Looks like Sandy's got the guys already chiming in for you. There's Alex. 62, watching 14 likes. Like to get the likes up. I'm watching you get Phil. Thanks, Phil. Glad you're watching me. Hope I don't mess up. <laughs> uh, you know, something about the likes, just so you guys know, and a lot of guys, uh, I like to call them the, the likes or the thumbs up police. Unlike their products, the people kicker are not square. Some good peeps. Hey, Jesse, thank you, sir. Uh, you know, Jesse was our first winner of the Kicker Unmasked Live slash share a meal with us pizza giveaway night. And Jesse and his whole family uh, had pizza on us and joined us and was pretty cool. It's Jesse's just over in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So once all this COVID stuff gets out of the way, maybe we can get Jesse and his family made to come over. We actually had our first live audience a few weeks back. Maybe we get Jesse to come join us, have our next live audience. What up, Team Kicker? You got Indiana in the house. Hey, Craig, thanks for tuning in. We appreciate that. So, you know, we really appreciate you guys watching the feed. And like I said, there's some, like I call them, the, the thumbs up police or the like police that come in the channel. And, you know, we certainly love to have the, li the likes and the thumbs up. But that's Clip Litzy, LOL. Thanks, High Five Egg. I appreciate that. But you're probably right. That's my nickname here. Um, but we really do, if you get a chance, you know, and it could be right at the end of the show when we're signing out and you're getting locked down. If you, if you did enjoy the content and you liked what we're doing here, man, smashing that thumbs up button. We don't monetize the videos and we never will. That's not what we're doing this for. But we really do like the feedback because it gives us a statistical or analytical information that as we go to our bosses, because we got to report to somebody. I mean, even though we look like we're running loose with the bosses, money we actually do have people we report to they like to see that you know what we're doing uh, that you guys appreciate and you enjoy so if you do enjoy this just on the way out the door at the end if you would smash that button it's just a way for us another way for us to have some analytical data to look at and uh, show that what we're doing you guys are enjoying and appreciating so yes we thank that uh, the police are on board I'll get you your 50 bucks later thanks for policing the feed thumbs up everybody so, you know, we're just looking here at the first little bit of the show. I like to see the comments coming through, see if there's any shout outs we want to do on here. Kind of, I like to call it housekeeping. Five star car stereo. So much fun to be had. Dean's in the house. How are you doing this evening, Dean? Thank you for tuning in. You know, it's funny, uh, myself, I do watch other channels that come on YouTube. Obviously, I don't do it on Tuesday night at 7.30, but there's lots of other shows that I watch, whether it's Hi Fi Vega or, you know, whether it's uh, Big D, you know, Robert. Uh, you got Toyd's DIY Audio. Uh, I'm going to forget so many. I can't. I mean, I even watch other stuff that's not audio related. I mean, if you're into tools and things like that, man, you got to check out Project Farm. Project Farm is a great YouTube channel. Uh, that guy tests everything and does it in ways that are very creative. Uh, so I like watching and participating in a lot of those YouTube channels, and it's great to see the guys who are doing those channels tune into this because I enjoy turning right around and watching their content as well. So thank you guys for tuning in.
very much. Uh, kicker unmasked. Here, I'm just I'm looking here at some. Kicker, un oh, I'm going to bring this one up. Boom, because I can. El Fuego. Kicker unmasked is the best thing to come out of the pandemic by far. I agree completely with that, El Fuego. You know what's interesting about this? We did the show. The original, obviously, was to replace because we couldn't go to SEMA. And we got a very long, uh, interesting conversation after that show about whether we should start a weekly show. And, of course, it was about, it was either two weeks or three weeks, and I forget the time frame, so I apologize, but it was either two or three weeks after that original unmasked, we went ahead and launched it and kicked it off. And for us, uh, yeah, it's great during the pandemic. It's great that we can communicate with you guys. We can talk about our product. We can talk about application. We can have you know lots of these great guests come on and have fun with us. Those are all great things. But what we've learned, more importantly, is this is a fantastic two-way conduit for us to get information from you guys. So even when the whole pandemic thing washes away, which it will, and when that time comes, I think you're still going to see this show carry on because it's a great way for us to let you know about the products that are coming uh, well in advance. And I think we've kind of started a trend there that, you know, everyone saw the new products we launched at SEMA and those are starting to trickle and slowly come out. And, you know, this year has been a challenge, but they are slowly coming out. But, you know, there's a lot more new product we didn't even talk to you about that's also going to be coming out. And when we're ready to talk about that. We're going to launch it right here on Kicker Unmasked Live Weekly. So don't look for the show to go away. It's a great thing that has come out of the pandemic, but I think you're going to see this running in tandem moving forward because it's doing a lot of good for everybody. And so far, everyone seems to enjoy it, including us. So Wilson Audio Labs, you guys are setting the standard for all other car audio companies to follow with this production. That is a very humbling statement. I certainly appreciate you saying that, Big D. Uh, we just really try to do our best to put together a production that looks good, sounds good, uh, is informative and you know none of us up here are comedians but we do enough silly stuff that it comes across as funny so you know if you get a good laugh out of it that's a that's just a bonus and a perk but we really try to put together a good show thank you for doing that uh, Rob Lancey agreed show is a great way to connect with your fans it is great Rob thank you for that call out definitely Jeff Wallace hey hey Kip hey, hey Jeff how you doing Shade Tree Living, an audio company with an actual face. <laughs> well, yeah, you know you say that. Uh, I drew the short straw, so I'm the one that gets to sit here in front of a camera and try to get it just right, Clark. But, you know, there's actually over 200 of us that, you know, house in this building right here. It's, a, you know, over 350,000 square feet. And we're going to do a virtual tour of that here in just a minute. And that's actually come from feedback uh, from right here on Unmasked. People have asked, say, you know, could we see more of Kicker? So what we've got planned for tonight is Ernie and I uh, did the best we could, and it's not high quality production, I will be honest with you. We want, ran around with a gimbal, and we shot this and just like we were walking through the building. And we kind of hit the highlights of the building, and we're going to do the same thing. It's just a video walkthrough of that, so kind of starting outside, coming to Kicker, what your experience would be like if you came to visit the place. And we didn't record any, well, we did. We recorded audio with it, but we're not going to play it because it was us directing ourselves. And we're just going to do a voiceover and talk about what you're seeing through that tour. I thought it would be great, and I reached out to him at the last minute, and of course it drives Bill Frog crazy because he likes to promote everything in advance, so I thought it was kind of funny. But I actually reached out to Mr. Robert High Five Vega and asked him to join us tonight because he's actually been here on a tour, he's seen the place, so I thought it might be cool to have him as another ghost in the background voice to kind of talk about what we're seeing and get his take on his experience that he had here. And he might have some interesting insight and or questions about what we're going to do as we go through the building. So he will be joining us here in just a second when we go through this tour. But that's what we've got planned for tonight. I'm going to try to keep a, a good eye on the feed and look for questions. Uh, we can pause the video and talk about certain things. So if you've got a great question about something we're touring or talking about, please post it up in the feed. Uh, myself or hopefully Sandy or Bill or uh, Jacob will see it. We can get that up on screen. We are willing to take questions. We hope we can pack all this into the 90-minute show. If we don't get through the whole tour and we get to the end of the 90 minute show, we'll just stop it right there. We'll pick up from that in another show and we'll cover it from there. Uh, we'd rather answer your questions and things that you have as we're going through the video, but we're gonna try to keep it in that time frame. We're gonna do the very best we can. Uh, Julian Jones, I'm just seeing these fly by. I wish you guys would get Alma Gates Bronco and house it in your museum as a memorial build. Haven't seen any update on its renovation. Julian Jones, that's an interesting question. Actually, uh, Alma's original Bronco has been through a couple different owners' hands, and I, since I don't have permission, I'm not going to say who has it currently, but the gentleman who has it and his son, uh, they are kicker dealers, ironically, and they currently have Alma's Bronco, and they've actually reached out to kicker. Hello, guys. Hey, David. Good to see you. 
uh, they've actually reached out to us and wanted to know if we were interested in doing a rebuild of that original Bronco. Um, so we don't know if we are, we don't know if we aren't. We're kind of talking back and forth and see what ideas we may come up with. But the original Bronco is around. Uh, none of the gear is in it at this point, obviously. But you may see that original Bronco come back in some form or fashion because obviously we've got the new L7X drivers coming out. And so that would be a really good vehicle to put something like that in. It'd be a great tribute to Alma and Team Gates. Uh, you know, for their competition days and what they did with the original uh, Solo X products. And a lot of people may or may not know, but the, uh, the Team Gates Bronco was really kind of what uh, started Kicker thinking about doing a Solo X type speaker. And that's why we developed that first one, that first 10 that went into her vehicle. And then, of course, turned into a retail product, which was the uh, 18, uh, the 10, and the 12 that came on later. So you never know what's going to happen with the original Bronco. It is in good hands. It's in a Kicker dealer's hands. And hopefully you'll see some good things come out about that. Be good to do that. That'd be cool. Hi, Kip. Hey, Jason Jones. How you doing this evening? Good to see you, man. Um, reading through the comments, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Matt, Matt, I think I've got this right. Mattster831, I think if I can read on the TV there. He's saying, will Kicker do installs for anyone? You know, we get that question a lot, Mattster, and really, we are not set up here to do installs for the public. Uh, we do build and maintain our own fleet of demo or show vehicles, and those are two different. I know it doesn't seem like it, but there's, there's demo vehicles and there's show vehicles, and actually when we get into the tour, you'll probably see the difference because we've got a little bit of both that are housed in our museum here. Uh, but we really do not do installs for the public. We're just not set up or geared for that. Our guys are busy, busy, busy just keeping up with what projects we have for the company as well as what we like to call special projects. Uh, there's all sorts of other things they get involved with. So no, we, we do not do installs here at Kicker. Although, if you're looking for a particular type of install, you can always reach out to customer service and we can you know, recommend a dealer for you. Because you know, if you're looking for something real intricate and lots of fiberglass work in this, that's, that's a different kind of dealer than someone who's maybe just going to do an install with a head unit, an amplifier, and a subwoofer. So you can always reach out and ask questions. Uh, we are pretty well in touch with our dealers. We know who does what kind of work. So uh, if you just want something that looks really clean all day long and sounds great, Five Star Car Audio is in the house. Uh, Pro Audio Center, those guys were here with us a couple weeks back. There are some fantastic dealers out there that do great work with our stuff. So, uh, highly recommend them. 418s, 1500, 2000 watts RMS would be great. R Shell Eason, 418s, 15. We'd have to make an 18 first. And as you know, the L7X line, we've already talked about, it. it's going to be a 10, a 12, and a 15. Moving on. Williston Audio Labs, install square pegs and round holes like a boss all day long. I've called Kicker before, they are very approachable. Thanks, Deviant, we sure try to do that as well. Um, just looking to see if we got any more comments here. Looking pretty good. I'm going to switch gears. Let me go over here to my notepad real quick. The, a topic that's come up, and I'm just, I'm just gonna drop the topic here so you guys can let it marinate in your minds for a little bit. And then we're gonna do, a, I don't know if we'll do a full show on it, although it could turn into a full show, is, I can't remember if it was last week's show or the week before, someone mentioned or brought up some dyno test video about one of our CXA 400.1 amplifiers. And, and who did the dyno doesn't matter. Who, it, it's just that they were, it was kind of funny, is that it's the amp dyno well over its rated power, but yet it, that, that mysterious max power rating is what people want to focus on. And you know, you know there's peak power, uh, max power, if you want to call it that. There's, <laughs> thanks Jesse. <laughs> you know, there's, there's, there's peak power and then there, you know, max power and people want to call kind of both in or peak, peak to peak. I mean, the words kind of change however you want to do that. And then there's RMS power. And then there's a thing called dynamic power. And dynamic power is a real measurable thing. RMS power is a real measurable thing. Peak power is a real, often really, really messed up and way exaggerated number that you can talk about in different capacities to try to make people feel like they're getting more value out of their amplifier than what they really are. Uh, because at the end of the day, if you're pricing an amplifier and it's, let's just pull, let's say it's a dollar and this amplifier costs a dollar, well, do you feel better if you bought an amplifier for a dollar that's 400 watts or do you feel better that you bought an amplifier for a dollar that's 800 watts? And unfortunately, uneducated buyers tend to shop only by how many watts is on the box and how much does it cost. And it gets very controversial in that area to have a conversation with an uneducated buyer because no matter how hard you try, you could talk about how you measure power and RMS and dynamic. And, and some people just look at you and they still go, yeah, but how many watts does it put out max and how much does it cost? So there are customers, they want to live in that world. 
I've, I've got an interesting idea. I've, I've run it through engineering, and uh, we got some things coming that I think are be really exciting when it comes to power ratings. And so we're going to have a show in the future to talk about that. I'm going to let that marinate on there. Uh, this came out of a little bit of prompting because of that video people talked about. So yeah, 400 watt amplifier that did well over 500 watts, so definitely made rated power, but a little controversy because of that max power rating. We're going to have a show about that. So that's as far as I'm going to take that subject. Let's move right along. With that said, tonight, like I said, it's going to be a tour through the facility. Ernie and I got something cooked up here. We hope works really well for everyone. And I wanted it to be just more than me going through here. Deviant for life. Just entered the contest. And once again, no beardy size on the drop down for shirt size. Hey, Deviant. You never know what's going to happen on Kicker Unmasked Live. Stay tuned. So with that said, Sandy or Jeremy, if you don't mind, would you bring Mr. High Five Egg onto the screen? I'd like to add him to the stream and bring him on board. Mr. High Five. Oh, there he Yo, is. Yo, what's up? Bada boom, bada bing. How are you doing tonight, Robert? I'm doing pretty good. I've got my kicker yellow in the background. I'm ready to roll, <laughs> man. You know, I certainly, you know, there are times I actually feel bad reaching out to you at the last minute because you are, if there's, I mean... Do, do you and Dean have a contest for who's doing video work the most? Are you tied at this point? No, we're, it's not even close. Dean is a freaking madman. And I'll tell you, behind the scenes, Derek is also another madman who has two channels himself. So these guys outwork me by far. But, but I tell more jokes, typically. <laughs> you, you, do, you do tell more jokes. That's the truth. Um, so I reached out to you late, uh, it was kind of late in the day today, and because after I thought about it, I'm like, we're going to do this video that's really silent. I mean, Ernie's going to run an audio track over the back, which is, is licensed music that we can use, which is great. Um, so it's not just silent. But I thought, instead of me just walking through and talking about this, it'd probably be really cool if I had you join us, because you, uh, along with uh, Robert, or it was Robert, and it was Derek, and man, who else came along with you on that trip? Was you two? Um, JDR, the what? legendary, the man that met the legend. Yeah. And yeah, then uh, was it uh, who was there three or four? It was just no, three it, of you. It was just three of us and Bill Frog. There you go. And so I figured since we're doing a kind of a tour through the building, and I always enjoy uh, giving a tour through facility for people because I get to not just show people kicker and show why I think what we do is so cool and the place we work at is so cool and, and the things we make are so cool, is what I like is I get to see the reactions from people who get to experience it for the first time. And your reactions to experiencing it for the first time, uh, I don't know if I can put it into words, but a Kid in the Candy Store definitely fits how you were on your visit that day. Yeah, for sure. And I think we were there like, what, eight hours, something like that. It was it was quite maybe longer than that. Who knows? It was a long day. Right. It was it was a very long day. I'm going to here's we're talking about bring Mothra B17. I've actually seen him on the channel before. Kip on RMS Mike Power. High five oh, on no. Max Mike Power. <laughs> let, let me cut. <laughs> let me cut mine down a little bit. Are you Just a little to make hot? Sure. Yeah, might be. That's funny. <laughs> well, we can either cut you down or he can raise me up, whatever. I mean, I'm not behind the seat. I don't run yeah. the controls. I'm just here in front of the camera. The, the, so this is I, Bill Frog's yeah. fault. I will say that for sure. It's all it's Bill Frog. Always, yeah. It's always Bill Frog's fault. If there's anyone we can <laughs> lay the blame squarely on, it's a guy who's willing to put on a frog suit and smoke a cigar. That's the guy. And that right. is definitely <laughs> Bill Frog. <laughs> It's the great. Hey, John, I love that one. It's the gravy. There's no better comment for that. For yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got some gravy. Please tell me when I can buy the new L7X Bear X Bunny. Uh, I'm trying to watch the feed too. All I can tell you, Bear X Bunny, is, is stay tuned. We will announce all that information on Kicker Unmasked Live. Uh, our target is third quarter, but. Unfortunately, as anyone, and it's not just car audio, if you're in the production pipeline of making anything in the United States of America, I mean, Ford and GM have shut down assembly lines because they can't get microprocessors to make the body computers or the ECMs to build in the cars. It's not just car audio. Um, this last year, and I'm, I, I'm pretty certain this year, are going to be interesting when it comes to getting things to market on time. But understand, we are doing the very best that we can. Uh, we're targeting third quarter of this year. Uh, of course, if we can get it out sooner, we're going to. But the latest information for that, we will always do news updates here on Kicker Unmasked Live Weekly. So stay tuned. Check those out. Drop the questions in the feed here. We're more than happy to answer them. But right now, the solid information is third quarter. When that changes, we'll let you know. 
So that's why I wanted to get you on board here. I figured it'd be really cool to do the tour here. You could then, you know, kind of give your opinions or interject or anything you think as we're going through the tour. And, and I certainly appreciate you for at the last minute joining us. And I, and I certainly, if you weren't available, I'd certainly understand. But man, you are definitely one of the hardest working men in show business. So thank you. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. I, every time you invite me, I'm honored and humbled. So I got to do it. You know, five star Dean saying out of stock. What's that? By the way, anybody has wire. <laughs> so it's it, it's it's a it's a it's a global issue on production, guys. And trust me, we are doing everything we can. Ironically, you know, we have kicker dealers that are telling us all the time that we're actually doing a really good job. Uh, you know, in spite of the fact that we are out of stock on items and some things aren't here, you know, there's there's delays on getting new stuff in. They still tell us that of all the vendors they deal with, they think that we're one of the one of the top as far as actually having product available. And then we, trust me, we are doing our very best for our dealers and for our customers. Uh, just like you, uh, we want the products in stock and we're doing everything uh, that we can, which you know means even paying a little bit more, doing speedier freight, whatever it takes, we're doing everything we can to try to keep that pipeline for our kicker dealers and our kicker customers uh, full and happy. So uh, bear with us, uh, we ask for grace, and trust me, we will do everything we can to fulfill those needs as fast as we can. So with that, what I think would probably be best is, Ernie, I'm gonna fire up the laptop here, and we're gonna start this little tour. You can th throw your track, whatever you wanna do, and then uh, just throw us in the background. I don't even think if we need to be on the screen or however you wanna handle it, but I don't think we need to be up there. But I'm gonna go ahead and start here. Got rid of me. <laughs> Got rid of me quick. Just leave my, my ugly face up here. They, they, they took me out of the stream. With, if I'm not in the stream, you can't even hear me. So I got to come back into the stream. So, so so everybody can understand, this is actually out in front of the building. Uh, we're, we're on 30, we, our address is 3100 North Husband Street. So we're on Husband Street and it's right across from, you saw the pan there. They call it the Boomer Lake. Uh, I, I call it Boomer Pond. It's, it's, it's a pond, it's a lake, you know, pond, pool. You know, you could swim in either one. Uh, but it is a beautiful set out there. It has a walking trail around it. It's, I, a little over three and a half miles. Uh, everyone, town, including myself and my wife, we you know, use, use the walking trail, but it's right across from the front of the facility. And as you walk up here to the front, you can see that's the guest uh, parking over there. And that's actually where, you know, Robert and uh, Derek came in and they parked there where that silver car is. That's actually mine sitting there. And uh, we have a visitor center. And that visitor center, it's open Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And it's right in the front of the building. You'll see that as we walk up. Uh, of course, the American flag out front, and then this is the building, and it's, it's kind of hard to tell. I'm going to let it kind of stabilize here for a second, come around. I'm going to pause it right there for a second. So you can see that front part that's half rounded there, that is the museum and visitor center, and then just to the left of that, that's the main entrance that comes in. And then off to the left, as you can see, pulling away from there, that is all the offices. It's a two-story uh, structure there on the front, and that's all the offices that we have on the facility. And this building used to be... Uh, a place uh, with more business forms owned the facility, and they actually manufactured the old green and white tractor-fed computer paper. So if anyone out there is even familiar with that at all, um, <laughs> this warehousing and office used to be where they made that stuff. And then, of course, computers moved forward, uh, things changed, uh, so they didn't make that here anymore, and so that product went away. And this facility sat vacant for, for tens of years. And, of course, Steve and the guys, they came along, and they purchased this, this facility here. And I'm looking here for a thing here. Sorry about that. And so they, they actually purchased this facility and we tore all the old offices off the front. We tore everything off. And initially the plan was this was just gonna be warehousing, uh, shipping and receiving, QA, QC for the company. And Steve had a dream. And one of the dreams Steve had is he wanted to have every part of Kicker underneath one roof. And so to make that happen, Steve said, you know, instead of this just being warehousing, shipping, receiving, and QA, I actually want to grow this or expand it. I want to get everyone who's off-site in different buildings and get them all underneath one facility. Because uh, I've been with Kicker, uh, it's 25 years that I've been here uh, direct with Kicker. And I remember when I first started, I'm trying to remember in my head, there was probably four or five that I know of, and there might even be more that I'm not aware of, but Kicker was really spread across uh, multiple buildings all across Stillwater. So this was kind of Steve's dream or culmination. He wanted to actually have a facility where he could bring everyone into one house to work on everything together as, as one. And so that's what you see going on here. And originally, this area you see out in front with the grass and the sidewalks, there was going to be 
a, a, a reflection or water pool here. That was in the original plans for the building. And that actually got nixed because uh, this building was being constructed back during that time frame that we all like to joke about was when the economy ran away and hid. We don't know what corner he went and hid in, but he wasn't around. And so actually we went back with a much more uh, reserved design on the front and went to grass and sidewalks because it just we didn't want to put the money into doing something like that. So, but you got to experience this. I mean, you walked right up to the front of the building and saw all this. Oh, for sure. I mean, the, the view when you pull up on this, it's, it's pretty striking. It's a beautiful campus and just the design of the building. Uh, when you see it, you're like, okay, yeah, that's kicker right there. It just, it stands out from, from everything else around it. Exactly. So as you come through, we're walking up to the front of the building. And again, this is open to, uh, we're still under a mask mandate here in Stillwater right now. Uh, so we practice either six foot social distancing and or mask, depending on comfort level and how many people are in a room. But uh, you can come visit now. It's open back up to the public. Um, so you can stop by Kicker Monday through Friday uh, between 9 a.m. Central Time and 4 p.m. Central Time. And you can come in and visit. And the, the doors are automated. They opened up as Ernie and I were standing there. And there's going to be spots like this where Ernie and I have to change the ISO and things on the camera because, you know, going from outdoors to indoors. But I want to stop right here and do a little pause. When you first walk in the place, you can see right here in the floor in brass, it says uh, soli, soli Dio Gloria. And basically it translates, it's a Latin, it translates basically to all glory to God. And if you know Steve Irby, he is definitely a Christian man of faith. And for him, it, it's, it's God and then it's family and then it's company. And Steve believes that all the good graces and things that he has experienced in life, not just for himself, but also his employees, comes from his faith in God. And, you know, with Kicker, it's, it's kind of a, a saying, you know, some people say, yeah, our company's a family, but it really is kind of a family atmosphere here. So uh, Steve likes that to kind of permeate through the building. But he attributes all of this success, uh, not just for him, but for the employees and the families that he gets to take care of because of Kicker. And he uh, attributes it solely to God. Um, so that's kind of refreshing. I mean, uh, Steve uh, has his priorities in the right places and he's not afraid to let people know it. So it's right there when you walk in the building. There's no denying it's right there. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and Steve, you know, Kicker is family. When you're with Steve, you can just tell. Like, Kicker is family, and once you're in the family, you know, you know it. Yeah, you do. So when you're walking in the front here, these are some products. Obviously, we have some displays here where there's, we like to call them historical products or really, you know, kind of products that were earth-shakingly different for their time frame, trend-setting possibly. We have a Solo X18 there. Uh, this is one of the original War Horse amplifiers that's on display. Uh, the original Q uh, uh, class components and then an, an IK500 is on display. Ernie's going to turn around here with the camera for a second and I'll show you. That's our receptionist at the front there trying to pretend she's not looking at the camera. She's doing a horrible, horrible job and she can't hide her grin. <laughs> but this right here, I'm gonna pause it right here real quick. This is actually one of the original, and you can see it in that bottom right corner, depending on what you're watching, it's on your phone or computer screen or TV, but you can see it actually has the Stillwater Designs logo on it. And the foam surround there in the middle, that passive radiator, uh, the original one finally died in, the, in about the last year. It finally just deteriorated away. I mean, it, it lasted as long as it could. And so our guys in the back actually got real creative. And you'll see in the tour video where we have the capability here to do forming and things like that. They actually formed and made a whole brand new passive radiator to go on there. Uh, it's not silk screened with the kicker on it as the original one was, but they actually had to make a new passive radiator to go in the middle of that to keep this historic box uh, in its, you know, basically its original look and everything. So they spent a lot of time, the guys in the back, to bring that back up to speed. But it's on display here. This is one of the original. It's not the, it's not the first box. It's not number one, but it's the first kicker box that Steve designed is what it got, the, you know, set us on our path. And a lot of people don't know Stillwater Designs and Audio, and we are still known as Stillwater Designs and Audio today. Uh, started off as a pro sound company. So we're talking live sound reinforcement, bands, churches, you know, that type of stuff is what Steve was into. And that kicker cabinet was really the happy accident that Steve got pulled into, which got us onto the path of doing 12 volt car audio. Uh, and this, what's really cool, this is a bunch of L7S drivers that are suspended on the wall. And I don't know if you'll be able to pick it up. That's Ernie paused here to try to see it. But if you can see, it's actually a moving wave of speakers. There's actually a computer that sends out a pulse or a tone to this, and each of those speakers will pulse in and out, and there's different patterns that it can do and things like that. It's normally triggered just by the front door. When you walk in the building, they just start moving, and then uh, there's actually a remote that the girl has at the front deck so she can turn it on and actually show it to people. That's pretty interesting uh, that Steve wanted to have something like that in the wall. It look, kind of looks like a sound wave or a sine wave, and it actually moves, so I don't know if 
in the video here, I don't know if you can catch it moving or not. I, I've seen it yeah. in my eye a couple times, but I'm looking for it. Yeah, you can. I mean, it looked a little square on top. I think you were clipping that a little bit, but. Yeah. <laughs> clip, clip, kip, clip ain't clipping. Yeah. <laughs> and then this one's pretty cool. This is actually in our in our museum, and you can see it moving there. I'm gonna actually back that up just a second. And that is an L7S cutaway. And we actually have an amplifier with a tone generator there that you can push the button on the display board and you can actually, that speaker's actually moving with it being cut away like that. So you get an idea of seeing that speaker actually move in a cutaway. And uh, you know, we have a lot of uh, younger people and up to high school, a lot of schools, a lot of uh, tech will come through and do a, a planned tour of the facility and they get to see things like that and it's really cool to them. I mean, I'm a, I'm a 50 year old techie guy and I still think it's cool to see a woofer cut apart moving. So yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I guess I'm what? 16 at heart. You know, this whole museum area, me and Derek and Jason, we could have spent literally the whole eight hours just checking out every detail of every vehicle, but obviously we had to move it along a little bit, but this is, it's just incredible, the the well thought out, you know, system laid out from periods of different periods of times. I, I really dug it. Yeah, it's pretty cool, and, and the the vehicles that we have in here, the whole museum was designed so that you could kind of do a walkthrough of kind of like the history of Kicker a little bit, uh, seeing how speakers work, what crossovers are. It's kind of just a real rudimentary introduction to audio that people can go through, but then the vehicles that are on display, uh, some of these are fixtures and they tend to stay in the museum. Some of them get pulled out for other things that go on display in the museum. This happens to be a 19, uh, I got my fact sheet over here. Hold on just a second. Cause I was going to say 60. It's a 61. Uh, that's what we're looking at right now. That's a 61 Ford Econoline. And it was actually a vehicle that was put together by a gentleman. Unfortunately, he's passed away. But here in Stillwater, by the name of Rick Kirk. And uh, he has a few unique vehicles over the years. And this is one of them that he's done with us. And then our guys did a full install with it back in the day. And this one, I think, if I remember it, we launched this at, I think, SEMA 04. Uh, Tim and I were talking about it, and we're pretty sure that this vehicle went to a SEMA show in 2004. And then this, which is pretty cool, this is a Makita job box, toolbox. And it's those big, ugly brown boxes that you see at construction sites that holds tools. And back when we did this, it was a project we did in conjunction with Makita. And actually, we outfitted, uh, I, I want to say it was like 40 some of these. I, I could be a little off the number, 42, 45, 48. It, it was over 40. Uh, and we did these with full AV systems in them, speakers, a TV, video playback. And these were how Makita launched there. If you look up there on the display, you can see those 18 volt lithium ion tools. This was what Makita put into their flagship stores to launch the new uh, lithium ion tools. So that was a pretty cool project. And they asked us if we wanted to have one after it was done. So we said, sure, we took it. Yeah, always. <laughs> and then this here, this is a Chevy Cruze. This is another vehicle. This was, uh, it's a 2011. And in that one, it was actually, and I asked Tim for this guy to write it down. We took that to, was it SEMA or CES? Well, SEMA for the awards. So it went to SEMA, and at that show, we actually got a Chevy Design Award and a Best New Interior Award on this vehicle. And as you can see, it is, I'm going to pause it there real quick. It's, I hope some of the detail and comes out. Those doors are gorgeous. Uh, they did those fiberglass inserts. It's got, you know, the Q components in there. And then that's actually a uh, kind of a milky insert with blue LED shining through it. I mean, the guys did a fantastic job on this car. You'll see when it comes in here, they even built a center channel for it. Uh, and then you spin around there. It's got six uh, solo classic tens in the back yeah. of this vehicle that all vent up through the rear deck. That, this is uh, one of, course, of my favorite builds too. I like the little was, kicker emblems in the wheels. You, you know, interesting fact about those kicker emblems in the wheels, we actually had a dealer back when we did that vehicle who had a 3D printer, and he 3D printed those for us to go on that vehicle. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, that is cool. And then this bike that's sitting here, it's, it's, there's a real cool story behind this bike. I don't know if any of you out there ever watched um, Deadly, Deadliest Catch. I'm going to pause right there with Captain Phil Harris. It's, it's a long story, but basically, if you were to order a Captain Phil Harris shirt, T-shirt, mug, or anything off of his show when he was doing that back then, it was actually fulfilled by Eskimo Joe's uh, here in Stillwater, Oklahoma. They actually have a facility here where they do printing of all that kind of stuff for not just Eskimo Joe's, but lots of people. So it's a fulfillment service. And the lady who runs that over there, Laura Demery, paint, okay, thanks. The lady who runs that over there, she um, is married to Roger Demery, who works here at Kicker. And so ironically, she knew 
Captain Phil, and then Captain Phil got to meet Roger because of them being married together. And when Phil kept found out that Roger worked at Kicker, he was just he was all over. He's like, "Okay, oh, I love Kicker. I know Kicker. I Kicker's a kid. I just it's great stuff. I love it." And he found out that we were working on a skunk. Back then, it was a Skunk Works project, which was our power sports line. It wasn't out in retail yet. It was something we were experimenting with. And Phil offered up an idea. He said, you know, I've got a bike. He said, I'm actually a Harley rider. He said, how about if I bring my bike down to you guys and you just use it as a test bed? You can put whatever types of different speakers and amps and whatever you're playing with, you can put it on the bike. And he said, I'm going to pause it right there and back up for a second. I love this. So he said, and then when I'm back off of the boat, I'll come down. He says, I'll come down and you guys can, I'll get on the bike and I'll go ride it around and I'll give you my perception of this product as a Harley guy about whether I think it's good, bad, different, whatever. So it's, it's kind of ironic to say it, but you know, Captain Phil actually had an influence on where we ended up with a lot of our power sports stuff because he just gave us his feedback as a Harley enthusiast about how he felt it worked and performed on his bike. And you know, unfortunately, the accident he had uh, and passed away, but we've actually got his bike sitting right here in the museum, and that, that's a really cool thing to, you, know, you can see in person when you come here to the museum. That is pretty, I mean, is there anything more Stillwater than Eskimo Joes and Kicker? That's the only two no. things you need to know about the water Oklahoma. That's, that's all you need to know. And then when I said, you know, that the, uh, the museum was set up as kind of a, a tour of the company history, this is a little bit here, and I know you probably can't see everything on that zoomed in, but this is one of the first panels that talks about, you know, Steve Irby, you know, and the loudspeaker cookbook, which literally he stumbled across that book and got into speaker design and measurements and cabinets, and that, that really kind of fueled his passion. You know, like most of us, you know, you get to that age when you're, you're young, you know, whether you're in your early college days or your later college days, and you're just like, you know, what am I here for? What do I really want to do with my life? Uh, and Steve was at that point. And, you know, the, the two things that you can honestly say, I think, will tell you is that he, he found Christ and that changed his life. And then he found the loudspeaker cookbook. And that was something that drove his passion to wanting to get into speaker design and things like that. So that kind of talks about it here on this wall. I think it's pretty cool. So that's something you see here in the museum. The original kicker box is on that wall. Of course, over here, in that bottom left picture, we didn't zoom in on it, which thankfully, but that one says crank it. Uh, there's actually a picture of me in there when I used to have hair. <laughs> That's a long time ago. <laughs> and then this one, this is really cool. This is actually a Trabant. I don't know if anyone's familiar with that. I'll pause it right there real quick, but this is a Trabant vehicle, and you'll get a good laugh when we go around and actually pan inside. I'm not gonna spoil the surprise. But this Trabant, it's actually got a full system in it. It was a competition vehicle back in the day. And, it's, and if I got my facts straight, and, and pardon me if I've got this wrong, but I'm 99% sure it was our Swedish distributor at the time. Uh, and unfortunately, not in business anymore. And they offered this up as we wanted to get it as an asset to bring into our museum. So yeah, we picked it up. So Steve got it and brought it in. And this is in its original condition as we got it from the distributor. And so when you look in the back here, yes, it's got a pair of C18s. So it's got a pair of competition 18 D series. And I think D series was the those last the, series. Those are of my era, legendary. Yes, and if I remember right, I, I think the D series was the last year we did an 18 in the comp series. Was the D's? Um, it's got a two. It's got a two-stroke motor in there. I mean, it's it's kind of funny, mix oil and gas. But you come in the dash here, you can see it's a really clean install. They went down to the kicks, you know, to try to get that sound stage and imaging and everything. They got stuff up on the dash. But once you look in the dash right there. Yeah, boy, howdy. That's a Kenwood cassette deck right there for you. There you go. <laughs> it's a, it's a pull out too. It's a snatch out. Yeah, you can grab it and run. <laughs> and then, of course, sitting underneath that, that's the KQ5. That's that five-band parametric EQ that, you know, we did back in the day that uh, would work with the original. Uh, see, that would have been SISS amplifiers that had the RG... X, the remote gain control crossover, you could actually plug it into the KQ5 and the, one of those knobs on the KQ5 would then be the base knob to control the RGX in the amplifier. So that's, kind of, that's, that's from the Wayback Machine. Yeah. Wait, you know, we missed the opportunity. Me and Derek should have got a picture of both of us sitting inside that. Yes. I wish, <laughs> oh, darn it. Uh, wish I'd have got that. Yeah, yeah. That would have been, that would have been a good one. And again, these are just displays that are in the museum, obviously, that talks about, you know, past product, current product, uh, things that we do, along with all the vehicles on display. And I'm going to pause here real quick. The Real quick, uh, Tim pointed out to me, I want to say, that, so that bike, 
uh, that you looked at back there for Captain Phil, uh, Dave Perowitz actually did the paint work on that. And I'm gonna have him write on a thing and show it to me because I don't remember, he's gonna write on that tab and tell me who did the paint work on this vehicle because what's cool about this vehicle that you're looking at, this is actually a 1950 Studebaker Champion and our guys uh, in tech, they stumbled across this rotting away, literally out in a field in Missouri somewhere. And they kept championing, we wanted to do this high end build, we wanted to do that one car, we wanted to kick her to do this one car. And they championed at the time and they actually got the management to sign off on this. And so they went out into this field, drug this thing up onto a trailer, brought it back to kicker. And when I say the guys completely rebuilt this car from scratch, I'm telling you, they took the body off they took the frame and threw it in the trash can. They built the uh, chicken spit rotisserie that they needed, and these guys built a brand new frame for this in the bay. Uh, new frame, it has a, a, a LS, I wanna say five, might be a seven. Is it three, it's LS three? I got Timmy here. It's cool I got him right here because he was one of the guys involved in the build, so I can just ask any <laughs> stupid question I want and he goes answer it for me. But it's got an LS three swap in it, but this car, is absolutely gorgeous. And when I say it was built from the ground up by Kicker, I mean from the frame up, it was built by our guys in the back. And there's some unique details in this that as the video plays, I'll, I might pause and go through. But it's a really cool vehicle. Uh, the paint, obviously we don't do paint here at Kicker, so the paint was done by Tracy Chico Shaw. And if I remember right, he's from St. Louis, right? Yes. Yeah, he's from out of St. Louis. So he did the paint job on this. And then we had a gentleman out of Edmond or Oklahoma City work with our guys. I guys did some of the work and then he helped us on all the interior. And as you can see here, it's all power sports amplifiers. And so when we were doing this vehicle, we thought it would be really cool to show people, you know, that in a classic car like this, where you don't want to eat up a ton of room, what we could do with small amplifiers. So this is all powered by power sports amplifiers, uh, it, which is just freaking cool. Um, you got a set of comp RTs, uh, they're tucked into each side. Those are imported cabinets on both sides. Uh, each one is powered by a 200 watt base amplifier. And then back in that time frame would have been 200 watt four range amplifiers running everything else. And as you look through this, it's distinct custom interior. That's uh, Tim, I love having Tim here. That's who out of uh, Edmond or slash Oklahoma City worked with us on the interior. But as you're looking through this, everything you see that looks copper, it's copper. it is copper. Yes. And what's unique about this is you, know, you never, you don't know what you don't know until you find out about it. And what's unique about this is the guys, they said, you know, we want to go with this copper theme, we want to do copper. But the thing about copper is if you do copper plating, which is what this is, as soon as you pull it out, it immediately starts to tarnish. Um, so if you don't clear it or coat it immediately, it's not going to stay this pretty color. And so they had to really uh, dig in and do a lot of research till they found a shop that had the capability and wanted to do it. And basically the shop told us that, you know, we'll do it, but if the part doesn't look good, you're gonna have to pay to have it all done again because we cannot guarantee that you're gonna get a clean copper dip and then it's gonna be protected to keep it from patining as soon as we pull it out. And so we knew what we were on the hook for, but we did this. And if you'll notice, that's the factory uh, speaker location there in the middle that says kicker. Um, this car images so well that when we first showed this at, uh, and I think SEMA was the first show we took this car to, they swore there was a speaker behind there. I said, well, put your hand behind there and look, there's no speaker. It, I kind of fooled them to think there was a speaker there. And the seats, as you can see through the seats here, those, that weaving down the middle of the front and back seats you see there, that is actually solid 12 gauge copper wire that's been woven into the seat. So it's real copper wire woven into the interior. And it's just, they did a fantastic job on this. I mean, the detail, uh, you know, you to spin around here, hopefully you can see something in the back without our ugly mugs messing it up in the reflection, but uh, you know, it's all Q components, uh, pressed copper. Uh, these guys just went overboard on this car. They did a fantastic job. Yeah, the, the copper really wowed me when I first I was, like, I was like, is this real copper? It's real copper. I mean, it's yeah. pretty crazy. And then, of course, this is the Snowcat. Uh, this vehicle was built back in 06, if I remember right. Actually, the gentleman uh, who built that uh, with me, his name was Tim Gertz, he and I built that vehicle. And that's a real unique Snowcat, our take on it. We did all the, everything you see on it. Back then, we didn't make cans, so we made cans. Uh, that's actually a, a, a T-shirt gun on top that'll shoot T-shirts and nothing else, I promise. Uh, and it has all of the original SX amplifiers on it. Uh, this vehicle has been out in the snow. Uh, it has seen the weather. Uh, the very, I think it was the next winter after we got this thing done, it actually went out to Park City for a, uh, an event up on there. They were, whoever, I forget the people who did the event, but they were looking for a cool vehicle to use to move people around the event. So it actually went out to Park City. We shipped it on a pallet 
on FedEx ground <laughs> to <Wow>. Park City. <laughs> and of course, you've seen this, the Wall of Boom. Yeah, uh, I've experienced it more than just seen it. <laughs> it's, you know, it's pretty cool, the Wall of Boom. There's, there's a lot of product there on display. Uh, what's active is the arrays you see there at the top. That's got uh, eight Q-class mids and tweets per side. And then the woofers that are in the middle, that's uh, 16 L7 woofers. I'm gonna back, actually back up here a second. Back and up it, one more time. The people that haven't experienced this, it is so intense. That That's the best way I can describe it. Uh, with the, not just with the base, but the line array, it's, it's very, it's very intense and the whole building is shaking. The windows are shaking. All the wire can lights are shaking. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. It is crazy. It's a pretty cool display. And this, this is another thing that I had my hand in and, and you know, helping uh, bring to reality. And it was fun. I uh, had a great time putting this together, building it with Tim. Uh, it's one of those good memories I got with a buddy of mine. Unfortunately, Tim's not here anymore. He's moved on to doing bigger and better things. But uh, that was really fun building that with Tim. It's a cool display. The woofers are the whole thing. It's not powered by car amps. You can't power something like that in an environment on car amps. It's all QSC uh, pro sound amps. But there's about 7,000 watts on the arrays up top between the mids and the tweets. It's all active. And then there's uh, 1,000 watts per woofer uh, down below. And those cabinets, it's actually four separate cabinets, uh, vertical arrays, uh, about 22 to 23 cubic feet per cabinet to hold those 415s. Uh, the port in the back's big enough that my son at the time, he was probably six, he could walk in the port and stand up and look out the front when we were working on it. So he thought it was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it was they interesting said it's born. For Exactly. A uh, quick shout out, just it's about roughly about 10 minutes. Timmy's over here, let me know. The contest for tonight ends at uh, 8.30, an entry. Looking down here at my thing, we're at 8.21, so we've got about nine minutes left for that entry. If you haven't had a chance to enter that contest yet, go do that. I can already see that we've spent a, an entire show just going through the museum, so we're going to have to do a part two on this because there's no way we're going to get through the rest of this in one show. No way. Ernie and I were nuts. Right. There's no way. <laughs> So, obviously more stuff on display here. Uh, that top video there, that's pretty cool. That's actually a video that we captured off of our assembly line, and that's actually L7S drivers in, uh, in manufacturing. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and I've seen, you know, I, I, I've seen all the videos, so I thought they were cool. And, and who doesn't want some, some audio on their, their beer, beer beef horns? Oh. Yeah, their horns. Steer horns? <laughs> Might uh, as well. That display, when the guys in the back built that to, for Power Sports, it was one of the most talked about displays at SEMA slash CES I think we've ever taken because it was so odd and unique that people just couldn't, they just had to stop and look at it. And then are we getting to my favorite car of the whole museum? Oh, we're getting there next, yes. We're, we're panning around here through the front. We'll get to it in just a second here. Matter of fact... There's some uh, some stuff oh. on display. I'm going to hit the fast forward button. Come around. She's trying to pretend she can't see <laughs> us. Not doing a good job. And then, of course, this is coming up the stairs, and this is your favorite car right here. Right. This and car this is freaking sounded amazing. It was an amazing car. You know what's cool about this is, as a teenager, Steve had one of these. It's, it's a Metropolitan, uh, and he had one. Of course, you know, there's a lot of cars we've had as teenagers we wish we'd have kept over the years. Um, and of course he grew out of it and moved on down the highway, but his next door neighbor had one of these and Steve kept trying to buy it from him. The guy's like, no, nah, I'm not interested in selling, I'm not interested in selling. And uh, Steve said he, he came home one day after work and it was sitting up on blocks, all four wheels <laughs> off. And so Steve asked him, so would you, you want to sell it now? And the guy's like, yeah, I might be interested. So I don't know what Steve picked it up for, but at the time we were actually working with a uh, custom rod uh, builder uh, out in Pennsylvania called Posey's Rod and Customs. And so we sent this car out to them, and they did a full hot rod customization on this. I mean, it's got Mercedes Benz, uh, French Den front and rears. Uh, everything that you see as far as customizing the car was done by Posey's. And then when they got done with it, it came to kicker, and then we did the full audio system that you see on board with it. And it is a fantastic sounding little car. I mean, as far as it's got, it's got two L7 uh, 10s in the back, uh, it's got uh, two. SX amplifiers, and then it's just got Q-Class components in the door. I mean, it's a very minimalistic install, but uh, it sounds absolutely fantastic. Uh, and yeah, it was your favorite car. I remember right. you, you, you couldn't get enough of this car as you were looking at it. I mean, you just, like, how is Steve Arby the coolest dude ever? He had a Metropolitan, he's building speakers in his teenage years. Like, <laughs> dude, that, it, Steve is the coolest dude that's ever lived in audio, maybe. 
And then this here, Ernie wanted to get a picture of this. This was actually a display podium that Tim and I built for a, a CES show. It had been back in that 2002 to 2006 time frame uh, that we had at that. And then this is actually our, we call it our store. But if you come visit uh, Stillwater Designs or Kicker, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, you can come in here. We have our, all of our T-shirts, our hats. Uh, we have our Bullfrog, our H&P products are there, so you can pick up a Bullfrog, you can buy headphones, you can buy earbuds. We have, you know, cups and mugs and glasses and all sorts of things, license plates, so you can come in and buy all that stuff right in the store. We don't sell car stuff out of the store. You gotta go see a dealer for that, guys, before you ask. But here I wanna pause this real quick. That artwork you see on the wall there, and you're gonna see artwork through the whole building. This is actually from our graphic artists upstairs, and over the years they've had the opportunity to just you know use their creativity and do things. And this was actually a project that we said, okay, we'd just like some stuff to kind of focus on H and P and products and your your vision on it. And so you're going to see a lot of artwork as we go through the building. And understand this artwork is all from in-house artists that work for Kicker. And I think that's, that's pretty, pretty interesting. Awesome. That is awesome. Like you know, Derek said, how do we miss the store? We definitely did not check out the store while we were there. I don't know what, <laughs> why. You know, it's, you know, I've done the tour through the building so many times that even I miss things to point out to people. And uh, it's Jimmy Ham, which is pretty cool. Uh, if anybody here knows him or, you know, he was on the show two weeks ago, Jimmy Ham is one of our dealers. Jimmy has let me know. He's been through the tour quite a few times with me. And Jimmy's let me know that, you know, Kip, I can just do the tour for you. I've got this. I got this. And then the last tour we just did with Mike Craner, he goes to me and says, you said things I didn't know. I guess I don't have this. And what's funny about it is every time I do the tour, it's like, well, this little thing, I remember this, and I add it to the tour. So it's always, the tour is kind of the same, but it's always a little bit different because I remember things. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's how it works, huh? <laughs> what's you know, cool I, about this, these, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. What's cool about these tubes, you can see them here, and trust me, this is just a small selection of them. But when we first got into headphones and earbuds, uh, what we did is at events, what we would do is we would challenge people to come up and listen to our earbuds. And if they felt like our earbuds fit better and they felt like our earbuds sounded better, we'd go, okay, if you'll take the set you got right now and you'll cut, them, cut the cord in half and throw them into our trash can, we'll give you a set of kicker earbuds. So it was a challenge. I mean, if you really think that this fits better and sounds better, prove it. Cut whatever you've got in half and take a pair. And there's every brand, every price point you can think of in these tubes and in, you know, trash bags. We had, I can't count, I mean, there was t t tens of trash bags, 20, 30, I, I, 40, I, I can't you, remember. I remember this. I, I, it was in the magazines because I totally remember this for some reason. It probably did get some coverage on it because something really unique that we did is that we would do this at live events. We did it at CES, we did it at SEMA, we do it out on the road, and we just challenge people. It's kind of our version of the, of the Pepsi challenge, so to speak, is if you think they sound that good, cut yours. And I'm gonna pause here real quick because we'll get back, we're not gonna make it tonight, but this will be part two. Those stairs lead upstairs to sales, marketing, and things like that. That's Benny, our guy, he's in charge of security sitting there at the employee entrance, but we're actually gonna spin around and actually walk into R&D so we'll, I think we'll get that in tonight. I'm just looking at the clock here. Time flies when you're having fun. So I'm gonna pause there real quick. So that's kind of a tour through the museum. Uh, you come into the building, you can see the museum anytime you want, like I said, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Central Time. That's available for you to come in. You can see and visit and tour the museum. All those cool cars, you can visit the shop. Now, everything we're doing from this point forward this is specialized tour. Uh, yes, we do these kinds of tours. Uh, yes, you have to arrange for them in advance uh, because we have to have enough time that if there's things we don't want you to see and as we go through this tour, if we get there, you'll see there's things blurred out that we can't show you right now. But to get a tour from this point forward, it is something you have to plan in advance to do. Uh, and then right now it's, it's a little tough because of all the COVID restrictions and things we go through. Uh, we did one for Mike because he, he's been trying to get in for over a year. Um, but understand, this part of the tour isn't what you're going to get on a normal stop by kicker at 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. This is something completely different and extra. And for something like that, you definitely need to reach out and it has to be planned well in advance. So just keep that in mind. But through the magic of cameras, we're going to walk you through. So this next section we're going to start in, this is actually walking out of the museum through the short hallway and security. And this is into actually the waiting area. For Jay Ralston, who's our general manager, he sits on the left. But more importantly, we thought you guys would get a really interesting uh, visit to actually go in and see Steve Irby's office. And so, oh, there's the blur. Oh, no. Oh, no. Is he nude <laughs> in there? <laughs> <laughs> but as you walk in here, you know, you kind of get a presence. Uh, Steve is a musician. 
uh, Steve was wrapped up in all that Beatles craze that came through, and some people may or may not know, we've talked about it before on other episodes, but Steve was in a band uh, called Moses, and, uh, you know, they cut records and everything, but Steve got the craze. Oh, there's a blur. Yeah. And, uh, oh, some more blur. But Steve is, indi he, he's a keyboard player. Uh, Steve is a musician. Uh, there's several other people here at Kicker. What's pretty cool, I'm gonna pause right there, you can see. That's an old, old, old sitting there on that table. That is a, st a studio monitor for performers. And that's back in the Stillwater Designs days. And that was, if I remember right, two four inch drivers that could actually be a stage monitor for you as you're playing. So I thought that was pretty cool that we kept that in the video to show that. But that's Steve's office. And as you can see, Steve is a musician. He's passionate about that. Uh, the Beatles were a huge influence on him. Uh, and of course, he had his own musical career. Uh, if his musical career would have went a different path, maybe we wouldn't have Kicker today. You never know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I guess we got lucky because Steve, he really is, he's a great guy. We got to have lunch with him. And not only that, when we come back, he joined the rest of the tour with us. And in fact, he ended up driving around JDR. So uh, he that's did a pretty big because he was JDR's having some life. foot problems. <laughs> yes. And so walking in here, this is R&D, and you got, that's one of our big meeting rooms that we have, you know, sales and marketing, and uh, R&D will get together and we'll discuss new products, alterations to current products, new features, all those type of things. And then we're pretty blessed that we have these displays set up, and we have basically every woofer, every coax, every amplifier line, we have all this stuff out on display, so that as we're having meetings, and if we need to go out and look at it for inspiration, or are we staying true to, you know, the, the design language that our product is, um, we always, we, we don't want Comp and Comp VR, and we, we want them to each have their kind of unique identity, but they all need to look like they're from Kicker. And so having all that on display really helps us recenter ourselves when we're talking about those things. And what's really cool about these rooms, and I know there's some glare on there, so it's hard to see, but the three meeting rooms downstairs are actually uh, named uh, ACDC, uh, Marley, and Mac. And of course, Marley is for Bob Marley, uh, Mac is for Fleetwood Mac, and then oh, ACDC is for ACDC. And if you didn't get that one, I can't help you. So <laughs> those are... Those are pretty cool that, you know, that we actually named the rooms, and that's what they are on the official. If, I, if you go into Outlook and want to schedule a meeting, that's what they're called. That's their official name, so that's pretty cool. I would do uh, my meetings are. exclusively in the, in the Mac room. <laughs> yeah, we do a lot of meetings in the Mac room. <laughs> <But> <laughs> Mac is where most of the meetings I go. These displays you got here, you don't realize how many products Kicker has until you walk through and look at all these displays of every single product you guys sell. It's, well, it's a whole lot in... You know, Jesse just said the blurred out thing was an L7X18. Mm, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> okay, here comes a wink. <laughs> yeah, there's been a lot of requests for an 18. People keep asking for that, so we might have to see what happens there. But this is, there's obviously a lot of offices in here. It's mechanical engineers, it's acoustical engineers, it's electrical engineers, it's project managers, it's measurement engineers. And then probably, and, and I say this without any, uh, and I mean this sincerely, and if, and if he was, I do it all the time during our tour. Matter fact, I know I did it with you guys when you were on the tour, but as we get to the end of this hallway here, we're gonna take a left. And this right here, for me, is probably one of the most important places in R&D. Uh, not that everything in R&D isn't important, but what happens here is that's Tim Sizemore, and Tim's been with the company for 22 years. And what Tim's in charge of is Tim is in charge of QA, QC. And so failures in the field, dealers calling in with problems, uh, determining how many products we pull off of a shipment to test before we can actually release the product to sale, all of that fits underneath his umbrella. So yeah, usually here at the end of his table is all the properly cooked speakers that people have taken out, you know, out there in the field, or it could even be stuff that he's taken back in the lab and he's cooked himself to find out. Uh, the only way you can find out what the limits of a driver are is you, you have to take it to the limit and see what it can or can't do. Um, but Tim is instrumental in having what we like to call a, an out-of-box experience. So the first time you get a kicker product and you open it up, is everything in there. It's the owner's manual, the screws, the remote base knob, if it comes with that, you know, if there's a harness, whatever comes in that product, is it all there? And then more importantly, when you take it out and hook it up, does it meet spec, THD, signal noise ratio, common mode, noise reduction, all the things that, besides power, make an amplifier. And, and you are definitely someone I can lean on that for that because it's not just the number of watts an amplifier makes that determines if it sounds good or not. There's all these other things that go into amplifier design. And once he figures out um, how many we need to test, then there are test parameters that are set up by our engineers. And, and I think we'll get to it in this video maybe. I'm watching the clock here because we are definitely, we're not going to get this all in tonight, but that means part two. 
Two, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Tim's giving me a thumbs up. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to push part two of this to next week. So you don't know what we had planned for next week, but we know now part two of this is going to be next week. But I really, what Tim does is crucial. And when I say that we don't ship it until it's tested, I mean, we do QA and QC at the time of manufacturing. And then we do QA, QC again here in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Uh, we ship from uh, multiple warehouses all over the world. And, but when we do a product run, those warehouses are not allowed to ship any product to anyone until we do an additional QA, QC check here in Stillwater. Because the fact of the matter is, if no problem shows up here in Stillwater in a batch, then there's probably not a big problem in the entire batch. And the, the inverse of that is true. If we find problems, those problems are probably pervasive through all the production. And uh, we, won't, we don't ship it unless it passes. It has to pass two QA, QCs. And uh, that's, how, uh, that's how important it is to us. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we've seen a lot of quality control, some uh, very abusive subwoofer situations. Uh, yeah, you guys put them to the test, no doubt about that. You know, and this here that we're walking into, I'm gonna pause it real quick there for a second. This is one of two of what I call the electronics labs. And any kicker product that is electronic, that runs on power, whether it's a bullfrog or Bluetooth earbuds or an amplifier or a crossover, whatever it is, those products are birthed, spider modded, test, tweak, blown up, everything in these labs. And what's really cool about these labs, when you walk in, these two labs have a very special flooring system. And if you've ever seen people who work on electronics and you're, you do need to worry about static electricity, if you pick up a chip or if you pick up a circuit board that's got chips and FETs on it and you zap it with enough static electricity, you can damage it. And the problem is when you're doing testing, are you testing a good board or are you testing a board that has something that might have a small glitch in it? So to prevent that problem, what you usually see in the past is anyone who's working in those labs has to wear a grounding strap around their wrist and that has to be connected to ground so that they are drained of any static charge on their body. So as they're picking up stuff, they know they're not damaging it because you could damage a board and it still works, but it gives you a measurement that's not accurate because it's a damaged part. So these rooms were specially designed. They're probably a couple of the most expensive rooms in the building, believe it or not. It has a special tile system, a special glue adhesive system. There's these huge ground rods that go right into earth right there in the rooms. And it's got this huge copper that grounds it all together. And then anything that sits on that floor that's metal, so the tables and anything else, it's all grounded. If you walk into these rooms, have a static charge in your body, it's immediately pulled off your body to ground. So you can pick up anything in this room. You're not going to damage it. You're not going to hurt it. And it allows us to have consistent testing, knowing that nothing's happening to the boards or the parts that's going to give us testing that's not valid. And so that's what's important about these rooms is it's really made so that we can work in an, an environment and don't have to worry about that. Plus, I thought it'd be pretty cool these here. Those are actually three power supplies that were built back in the original Warhorse days. Those are capable, and I, I may be off, and if I am, someone will correct me, but I think they're 300 or 350 amps of current at 12 volts, and we had to have three of those built so that we could actually test Warhorses in-house. Of course, batteries as well. So That's pretty serious. That's, that's like three-phase situation. It is, and that's a huge dummy resistor uh, load over there um, that was built for something that's coming that I can't talk about. Mm -hmm. I'd wink did, at did you, but you wouldn't see me. Yeah, we, 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 you got the <laughs> wink, you just didn't see it. <laughs> so this lab we're leaving right now, this, I like to call that, kind of like I call it the AFM, which means aftermarket. So that's where a lot of those projects happen, but not all of them. And then in this lab over here, there's a lot of like the, uh, the, the, the power bars, uh, marine products, H&P, a lot of that stuff happens in this room, but not just those things. Even amplifiers come into this room and get tested over here. But you can see these guys are working with those stacks. I mean, that's all AP gear, oscilloscopes. It's yeah. expensive. It takes a lot of money to set up proper testing. This, this is basically like uh, Derek's dream world right there. Yes, it is <laughs> Derek's dream world. <laughs> Absolutely is. And so now we're walking through those doors there we just came through. That side is the electronics world of kicker. This side is the acoustics world of kicker. And so as we're walking to this room right here, I'm gonna do a pause real quick. They had the computer out uh, in another room doing some other testing. So unfortunately it wasn't sitting here, but for those who hear about a clipple or talk about a clipple, wanna understand what a clipple is, this is half of what a clipple is. And that's the jig that's literally bolted to the floor so that the driver under test cannot move. I mean, it is solidly anchored to the entire building and then it's clamped into that jig. And then right in front there, you see that's a calibrated, calibrated laser that connects to the computer and the Clipple hardware slash software so that we can do any and every test that we want on a speaker. 
And I use the term a speaker because, yeah, we test the competition. We know what's out there. We don't just look at our own stuff. We look at other stuff as well. Uh, you, can't, you can't go into a market with a product and, and feel good about it performing against the competition if you don't know who your competition is. So, yeah, we test a lot of stuff. Um, and then in this room, uh, Ernie had to do a little blur there because there's some things we can't show you. That was, thumbs up for Ernie to get in the blur. Yeah. Thanks for that other blur, Ernie. We, we couldn't show that stuff either. But we have uh, not just one, but we actually have two clipples in the facility. Um, so we actually have a couple of those that we use. And then this is what I like to tell people is probably the, if it's not the most important room at Kicker, it's, it's right up there on that step. And this is our measurement and listening room. And what's unique about this room is you pan around, I don't know if you, I'm gonna back it up here a second. So as you walk through this door, I want you to notice how thick that wall is. And so there's a door on the outside and there's a door on the inside. This is actually a floating room inside our building. And the only place that that room is connected to the main kicker building is this hallway right here. So you can actually, and they're heavy, they're big heavy doors. You can close both those heavy doors, you got that nice air gap. And what it's for is that once you're in that room, you can take an acoustical measurement or you can do a listening test and you're listening to just the speaker systems. You don't have to worry about outside interference. Uh, if any of you are into speaker design or stuff, uh, this room can be called what's called a half dead or a half live room. Both terms are accurate. Uh, and what it does is it's, uh, it takes the place of an anechoic chamber. Uh, anyone who's into speaker design knows what an anechoic chamber is. Anechoic chambers, uh, their whole purpose in life is that all you're measuring is the speaker and not the environment. But to do a true anechoic chamber requires a very big room. Not in, and when I say very big, I mean in all dimensions. And by all dimensions, I mean X, Y, and Z. So width, height, and depth. Um, so they're very big. I'm gonna back up again here real quick, pause it. So as you look around this room, what this room does is you can see all the odd shaped things on the wall. You can see the odd shaped things in the back. You can see there's no parallel walls or surfaces. You can see all the foam that's put around the area. What this room does is it basically controls uh, early reflection, late reflection, so that you get direct sound, which means you're listening to the speaker or the product under test and not the room. And it controls uh, standing waves, specifically in base area. So those things you see on the wall there, and you'll see them at the side here when Ernie, I'm gonna pan back again, hold on a second. Back up a little bit more, so we walk in, you can see that. So all those things there control standing waves and base energy. So at the end of the day, if you're standing, there's kind of like a line in the sand in that room where that, that foam stops and it gets back into that hard surface. The room's not so dead that it, it's, it kills it but it's dead enough that when you take measurements and listening, you're measuring and listening to just the product. And there's been multiple times that I've been blessed to be in on listening teams on products we're developing or designing. Uh, most recently would be the L7X. Uh, we test those in here, measure those in here. And this room is what allows us to make that magic happen. Uh, and there's been multiple times where I've seen Steve Irby we'll tweak and tune or we'll listen to something and say, no, we need to get, let's do a different surround, let's do different this, let's do different that, and get it to a point where it sounds good. And what's unique about that, and I think it makes it, us unique as a company, is we choose to let our ears tell us how something should sound and not computer screens. And I know I made a big deal about this to you and to uh, Derek when you were here, is that yeah. It, it, if we measure something and it measures well, sometimes things that measure well don't sound good. And the inverse of that is sometimes things that sound great don't look measure well. And what I tell people all the time at the end of the day, when you're designing an audio product, you know, it's just like looking at a steak. You know, I could show you a steak that is just gorgeous, perfect sear marks, it's got the little corn peppers on top, you can look at that steak, you can hear the sizzle, and you're like, man, that's gonna be the best steak I've ever tasted. And then you cut into it, and it's a little hard to cut into, but you finally get that piece cut off, and then you throw that in your mouth, and you're like, that's the most grisly, no flavor steak I've ever put into my mouth. But your eyeballs told you it was gonna taste fantastic. Well, that's what happens with, with people when it comes to measurement devices, is sometimes people get into that path where they want their eyes to tell them how it's supposed to sound good, and your eyes can't tell you how it's supposed to sound good, only your ears can. So our take on, all, and we have, we have lots of money in testing tools, and we use them every day, but what we do is, if we hear something that doesn't sound right to our ears, an anomaly, uh, does that what a bass drum's supposed to sound like? Is that what a gu guitar's supposed to sound like? Does that piano sound right? If we hear something that sounds out of line, we use the tools to help us find the problem. 
We don't let the tools tell us that there's a problem we should find. Does that make sense? Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, uh, you can't listen with your eyes, just like you said. No, <laughs> you cannot. So with that said, you know, that's one of the most important rooms in the building because the sonic signature, which our speakers do have a sonic signature, uh, our amplifiers have a sonic signature. Uh, as you know, the key 200.4 or 180.4, if you got the one before that, it has a sonic, when there's a house curve, it's a kicker yeah. curve, it's how we think things sound. And uh, that's how that thing with its, you know, its dumb AI can actually go in and tweak around and work with it to finally get you something that sounds the way it does. So uh, I think that's vital. I think it's very important yeah. to understand that, that that's what happens in this room. So I, I probably spent a little more time than you probably want in this room, but it, to me it's so exciting because uh, we make products in here that sound good and sound musical. And that's yeah. what this room allows just, us to just do. Just walking into that room, I mean, you can see how you your voice sounds different to you than you're typically used to hearing it. Um, yes. You, you actually hear how your voice sounds. You do, it's a, it's a very interesting room. Uh, and then this room that we're walking into with Ernie, of course Ernie had a grin on his face when we were doing this, because oh, you know this, what Ernie's this into. This one's creepy. This, this, room, <laughs> this room is creepy. Oh, no, 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 is this not the room? Oh, yes, it oh, is. Oh, yeah, it is. It is. It is. <laughs> so, so this is, you can notice that right there on the wall, there's three 240-volt uh, taps. That's so we can bring in those three huge power supplies to run big amps for under test if we need to. You can see there's a rack here with uh, some QSC product in it. I mean, we use, it's just easier to use a pro sound amp when you're doing testing on speakers than it is to try to fire up a car amp. So that's why you see that going on in this rack right here. But that's the outside of the room. And then this is the room that, yeah, it's pretty this, cool. This one will give you the heebie-jeebies, this room. It will. So this one is all padded. It, it's got a fire suppression system. All the electrical is on its own sealed. Uh, we break things in here. We break things in here. Uh, if something were to catch on fire, it's all self-contained. We don't have to worry about getting into the building. Uh, if the sound, the, all the noise we're making in there obviously stays in that room. And if you notice, uh, Ernie did you a favor and he actually blurred out something there for you that we can't show you. So I'm just going to point it out because I think it's pretty cool because I can't wink at you, but I guess I can show you a blur out. Yeah. The so th there's something. Audible wink. Yeah, so there's, there's something under test that's blurred out that we can't talk to you about just yet. But we will, I promise. We will talk to you about it someday soon. <laughs> it looks but that's an L7X that under test right there. Yeah. So we did, we did sit in that room with the door closed. And uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it's 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 quite uneasy feeling if you're in there for any length of time. It is. It's so quiet. I mean, if there's nothing going on, that room is so quiet. You you can literally hear your heartbeat, and that's a little disturbing. Yeah. <laughs> so coming out of R and D, this is actually a hallway. Well, back up here just a second. This is a hallway that leads uh, out into the warehouse. That, and where we're at is this this third of the building would be the receiving warehouse. But then on the left-hand side here, we actually have three labs. And when I told you about Tim up front, our QA, QC guy, well, he's in charge of what happens in these three labs. And so these, these guys were like, oh, do we need to turn music down or whatever? I said, no, no, there's not going to be audio. Don't worry. Just keep doing what you're doing. But this is a, a QA, QC lab for acoustics. And what these guys will do, they'll uh, unload enclosures and check them for rub buzz tests, leaks, uh, make sure we don't have air leaks around screw holes, make sure we don't have air leaks around gaskets or speaker terminals. They check all sorts of stuff, anything acoustic. So Tim has a whole bunch of tests depending on the product that happens in that lab. That's QA, QC for acoustics. And then this lab, Wade normally is in here. He was out for the day. But this lab is the same version of what you saw, but this is for electronics. And so as you can see, he's got a whole rack of Astron power supplies here. Those are 50 amps a piece. So he's got plenty of current on tap. He's got a battery. Uh, he has an AP, uh, an O-scope, and some test procedures that have been set up by our engineers. And whether it's one, 100, 1,000, or all of them, and I can tell you, it goes through all those different gambits, uh, Wade then unboxes our electronics. Uh, he runs them through an AP test procedure here that's an automated process that our engineers have put together, and it does whatever test we need. Does it make power under, under voltage? Does it pass THD test? Does it pass signal noise ratio test? Does it pass common mode noise rejection? That's important. CMR is because of the fit or the differential inputs that we use. Uh, that tells you how well it's gonna reject noise coming down the speaker or RCA cables into the amplifier. We don't just measure power, folks. 
we measure a lot of other parameters and we have some pretty high standards because when it comes to making an amplifier, there's more to a great sounding and performing amplifier than how many watts it makes. Watts is the thing that a lot of people focus on because they see that as perceived value for dollar, but there's so many other things that make up an amplifier and we have uh, kicker standards and that's exactly what we call them, first signal noise ratio. Uh, there's other products out there in the market that we've tested that we don't know how people can even want to have that product, the signal noise ratio is so bad. May make a lot of watts for the dollar, but when it comes to having quiet operation and no extra, extraneous noise or ability to reject noise, they, they don't do it at all. So understand, we don't test for just power, we test for all those other things that are important to us as a brand. If it says kicker on it, it's gotta meet these certain standards. It's pretty cool, I wanted to unbox it here and show you. Besides the fixed dummy loads that are up there with some fans that he can use, he also has some speaker cabinets that are underneath in this very heavy double-walled box so he can actually uh, run electronics under an actual speaker load. Uh, you know, a fixed resistive load is, is very hard on an amplifier. We do fixed resistive load testing on everything that we do, but yeah. then we also do reactive load testing, which and that's what happens with a speaker, because if you look at the impedance curve of a speaker under use, it's not a solid four ohm load. It varies over its uh, operating range. And so that gives him the ability to do both those types of testing in this lab. And you were hiding a little Kicker XS100 up there, wasn't it? <laughs> or was that a ZR1000? I think that's a ZR1000 up there. Uh -huh. And then as Ernie, Ernie wanted to go to the studio, and I said, no, Ernie, come into this lab. So that's why it looks like he's coming back. But this lab here is another lab, and right now it, it kind of does combine. It's electrical and speaker QAQC, but a lot of our OE projects, our OEM, stuff that we make for car manufacturers, happens in this lab here for QA and QC. Yeah, and, and the so OE Ernie, stuff was impressive as well. Uh, we got to check that out, the build quality of it versus, you know, some of the other stuff you see out there. It, it's very interesting. I mean, we, um, basically, if you could think of high quality aftermarket gear, but made for OE, that's what we do. And then this lab here uh, is a test lab that our guys use uh, in R&D if they need to bring a vehicle in and do testing in car, things like that, but right now, uh, because our uh, OE project is really growing and we had to find some space real quick for them to do additional testing. This is a lab, you can see it's got speakers for under test. I'm gonna pause it right there. If you look in the background right there in the top left corner with that kicker sticker, that is actually a uh, amp dyno. And then of course there's Astron power supplies and batteries underneath that. That's our area where if you've seen any of the amp dyno videos we do, this is where we do those testing is, is right in this room. But more importantly what's going on right now is there's two test stations here set up and these are all the four inch speakers that go into what we call the multi tailgate pro and that's that speaker system that goes in the back of those GMC tailgates that fold down. And every single speaker, every single harness, every single bracket, every single amplifier, anything for that project, it all goes through 100% QAQC. And what these guys do in here is they literally have an automated test where they hook the speaker up, they set it down and there's actually a, a impedance measurement and things that happen through the wiring as it's connected to and then there's a microphone that does listening tests and it's an automated test to determine if there's any issue with that speaker, it doesn't go out. Uh, we don't install those into those systems and they just, they go into the trash. Uh, yeah. If they're not any good, we don't use them. We, we got to see that in person, you know, it's just like if you've ever used a Dayton Dats, you know, you hear the little woo. Yep, just, just exactly. One right after another. And I'm watching the time here. I'm going to try to keep us. We're coming up to 8.52. I'm, I, I know there's a stopping point in this video. We'll get to it because we're definitely pushing this to part two. This little area you're walking into here, you can see, is actually a test area. I'm going to pause it here in just a second. Boom, right there. If you can notice, those are L7 woofers that have had the cone cut out. And they're in boxes that aren't really boxes. And the woofers are wired out of phase. And what this allows us to do is we can put an amplifier here, put it under test with a real reactive speaker load and have the amplifier experience all the different things that it's gonna see running a real speaker, but we don't have to listen to it because there's no real box, there's no real cone, and they're wired out of phase. So it makes this kind of strange noise when it's there operating, but it's a real world test environment where we can put an amplifier underneath a real speaker test. So you can yeah. see there, and there's holes in the cones, holes in the boxes. I mean, <laughs> they don't make bass. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then this here, what's really cool, is this is a test area. You can see the batteries up there, and Ernie's got a, a great shot coming up. We actually use a electric motor to turn an alternator, and then that alternator goes to a battery, 
And so we're actually duplicating the charging and electrical system of a car, and that is where we test the amplifiers, is in a real environment, like it's hooked to an alternator, like it's hooked to a battery. I'm gonna back up here and get in here real quick, because there's one shot I wanna grab. And of course, those are guards on there to keep people's fingers out of them. Back up again real quick. Went back, okay. Right there, you can kind of see that computer that's an automated test computer that runs the amplifiers under test and it monitors things, it logs things. And so these guys are engineers. These guys can bring an amplifier back here. They can set up whatever test parameters they want. They hook it up to an alternator, to a battery, and they let it go. And they run it right up to clipping or a little over clipping, whatever testing they're trying to do, or run it into hard clipping. I mean, I've seen them do all those kinds of testing back there. But it's the, the closest thing to having a real world electrical system from an average everyday car that we test our products under. And so when we say we do real world testing, I mean, it's, it's cool to go into labs and see all the high end tech gear and the power supplies and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, we also want to test them in as the closest that we can in a reliability stress test or what they may be looking for and that's what this environment simulates and of course I and a lot of people in the company once it gets past this point they'll send out an email occasion they might be looking for 25 employees go hey we have an amplifier we want to put in a car for testing and they'll take you know if you've got an appropriate car this is what we want to test and then they'll get those amplifiers or those speakers whatever it is in a car and we just drive them back and forth beat on them from work to work over the weekend just <laughs> use like a real product for you too yeah, we get a little help if you need it. Yeah, there's okay. there's some help along the way. Um, I always some need people help. who work here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, obviously, not everyone who works at Kicker came from an installation background. I mean, myself, I did back in the day. But there's a lot of people here. They're just they're just music enthusiasts, but they wouldn't know the proper way to disassemble a car, put in an amplifier, wire it up. And so our guys in the back can obviously you know help out on those occasions. So that right there, and I'm just looking here at the clock. I'm gonna call it right there. We're gonna turn this corner. I don't, man, I feel bad running over. Well, yeah, I think we're going to. I think we're gonna wrap it up. It, so I'm gonna let it run I right here. May I humbly suggest my big, my big buddy, Derek from Wilson Audio Labs for next week's part two. May I volunteer him? I'll tell you what, if he's up for it, I would gladly volunteer him for next week's episode. If he's still in the feed, if he wants to chime in, we could absolutely have him in for part two. Oh, yeah. um, but that's, you know, folks, Ernie and I talked about this, and I think we were a little optimistic. We thought we could cover this whole thing in an episode, but when you really stop and talk about all the things that are in that video, there's just no way we could cover this one episode. So we've made the command decision on the fly that we're taking next week's show, which you don't even know what it is anyway. We're pushing that out a week. And next week will be part two of the tour through the facility. I'm up for it. Cool. Wilson Audio Labs, that would be Big D himself. He's going to be joining us next Tuesday, and we will finish the second half of this tour uh, with him. It'll be fun. Don't, don't, I'm not kicking you out of the studio yet, though. I don't want you going anywhere, Robert. Oh, oh, oh. I'm still here. I'm still here. Don't, don't go nowhere. Don't go nowhere. <laughs> so, guys, I, I want to thank everyone for hanging in there. I know that I'm going to get this wrapped up as quick as I can because we're getting right up to that 90-minute mark. As you know, I try to keep it right at 90, but sometimes we run a little over. Uh, most important thing, we're going to do the drawings for tonight. I know Bill's got our winners back there. A uh, couple things to keep in mind for that. If you're a winner, we do need to get your actual shipping info. No P.O. boxes. We can't ship to a P.O. box. We need you to verify your shirt size again. I know that it was part of the questions when you entered, but we'd like to just verify that one more time in case what you clicked in the box didn't stick or it, you selected the wrong one and didn't know you did. But we want to verify your shirt size. And we do need your phone number for contact. We do not sell that phone number. We don't give it away to anyone. But for us to ship to you, FedEx or UPS or United States Postal Service, pick your whatever we end up using to get to you, they need a phone number so that if there's any issue in getting your delivery to you, they can reach out and contact you to make arrangements on that. So that's why we need your phone number. So, Bill, we'll be reaching out to you over email to get that information, or you can reach this direction. It would be social at kegger.com. But the winners of tonight's show, that's the information we need to get from you to be winners. Now, courtesy, hey, do me a favor, Ernie. Bring Sandy into view. Can you, can Sandy back there, can she get on cam? Is it possible to get Sandy on cam? Because I don't want to show this without Sandy. Besides, if you go to her, it'll give me a chance to get to my water. <laughs> ah, that's still, okay, give me a wave, Sandy. All right, so what we're about to do here, 
I have to say that this was all Sandy's doing. Now, all of us probably talked about it and joked about it, but Sandy is actually the one, when it came to putting the rubber to the road and making it happen, Sandy did this. So everyone give a virtual round of applause or a congratulations to Sandy because she's the gal that made this happen. So I think she's shy. She doesn't want to look at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what we got here, come on back, Ernie. So what we have here is pretty interesting for those of you who don't know. And of course, he, he's mentioned it quite a few times in our feed and I follow other channels, including 12 Volt Talk and uh, Reverse Polarity and some other shows. He find, I see him pop up in there and he talks about it, but he has a, a bearded dragon, he calls it a beardy, but Deviant for Life has a bearded dragon. And he's always, ever since he's been in our feed, always talking about a t-shirt for his bearded dragon. So the first prize we're giving away tonight, which isn't on the books, but we, we had a random drawing and it came up and said bearded dragon. And the only person we knew of that could be a bearded dragon was Deviant for Life. So what we have here, my, 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 my buddy Tim's getting ready for a, we actually have a t-shirt for a bearded dragon for Deviant. So that's the, that's the, I guess you call it the front, and then the back, I mean, it's got these little little armholes, and then it's got a little cinch here, I guess, where you cinch it up on him. I, I, I can't speak from experience. I've never put a T-shirt on a bearded dragon, but hey, maybe we can get some pictures, Deviant. You think that's worth a try? So we actually have this, courtesy of Sandy. You know, he, he gave us enough grief for enough time, fun grief, that we decided it was time to actually get him a kicker T-shirt for his bearded dragon. So Deviant, we need you to reach out to Bill social at kicker.com, give him your uh, shipping information, and we're gonna get this in the mail out to you, but this is a t-shirt for your bearded dragon. And I expect to see pictures of this everywhere. <laughs> we need a video, hey, uh, Wilson Audio Labs, of course, that'd be big D. We need a video of him trying to get this on at Deviant for Life. I agree, we need a video. You need to shoot a video, Deviant, and you need to provide that to us here, and we will actually rebroadcast it here through Kicker Unmasked Live. So we thought that was pretty cool, but a big shout-out and a thank you to Sandy. We all had fun joking about it and talking about it, but Sandy made it happen. So that's, that's our awesome. first prize that we're giving away for the night is that right there. So I thought that was pretty he, cool. He literally willed that into existence. Sandy made <laughs> it did. happen. That's, that's pretty he awesome. He did. We, we thought it was pretty cool. And so when Sandy brought it into the seat, she, she was so happy. She brought it, she said, I gotta show you this. And, she, and I, I didn't know what it was. I mean, I'll be honest with you. When I first looked at it, I was like, is this a new beer koozie? That's exactly, <laughs> That's, I thought, I was like, couldn't he just use one of the koozies and like cut the holes or the, put the arms through the whole part, you know? <laughs> exactly. So, so that's pretty cool. So, guys, I hope, hope you have fun with that. Deviant, give him a shout out. I think it's pretty yeah. cool. We're going to get that in the mail to him. Just reach out to us, Deviant. We just need you to reach out to social at kicker.com uh, and get us your information for shipping. Same information we need from all the winners tonight, but we will get that out to you. And then we want video and pictures of us on your beardy. Because yeah. if you what, don't do what, that. What other car what? audio company would do this for a viewer? Nobody. Major, major props to Kicker and Sandy and the whole team for, for doing something like this. You know, and we don't, we got two weeks till we get paid. So we got two weeks before we all get pink slips. So enjoy it while you can. <laughs> <laughs> you got them fired, Deviant. <laughs> <laughs> so with that said, let's wrap up and get the rest of our winners here tonight so we can keep this show as precisely on that 90 as we can. So Bill, do we have our third place winner? Yep. Bill's got third place. Third place tonight is going to win a set of EB300s. You're gonna get one of these gray uh, over my other shoulder here, the gray unmasked kicker t-shirt in your size and a set of koozies to keep your drink cold. So third place, who's our winner, Bill? Who do we got? Winner number three is Kyle R in Denver, Colorado. Kyle, congratulations, you are our third place winner tonight. You're getting those EB300s, one of the gray kicker unmasked shirts and a set of koozies to keep your favorite beverage cold. Thank you for joining us tonight. We hope you join us in future episodes. Let other people know about it. And if you had a good time on the way out the door, smash that thumbs up button so that we can uh, know that we're doing good things here. Winner number two, Bill, who do we got for second place? Second place is Davin A and, whoa, Kalua Kona, if I got that right, Hawaii. So Kalua Kona, Hawaii, yeah, just Davin one of, A. Yeah, just one of these. Yeah. I think that ought to cover um, it. I think what we're going to do, I think for you, you're not going to win the prize we have on the books. I think we'll send you a carton of eggs and some spam because I know that that's a delicacy in Hawaii. <laughs>
But you are our second place winner tonight, and you're getting the same thing. You're going to get a set of EB300 uh, Bluetooth earbuds. You're going to get one of those gray kicker unmasked T-shirts in your size, and, of course, a pair of koozies to keep your favorite beverage chilled while you are watching Kicker Unmasked Live or any other great things you're going to do in your daily life. And that leads us to winner number one. Winner number one, Bill, is... Final winner, Scott R. in Atlanta, Georgia. Scott R., Atlanta, Georgia, you are our first place winner tonight. You're going to get a BF100, a Bullfrog, a Bullfrog 100 speaker system. You're going to get one of the original Kicker Unmasked Live Special Edition T-shirts in black. So you need to uh, make sure that your size is proper so you can wear that shirt with style. And you're going to get a set of koozies as well. So you're being our first place winner tonight. Those are the prizes. Of course, you already knew what your prizes were. I, I'm finally hip to the scene. Bill puts it into the drawing. I know you already know, but I used to think you guys didn't know. So the cat's out of the bag. I guess I'm the foolish one. So thank you all for playing tonight and being winners. Again, if you're a winner, reach out to Bill. Bill will be reached out to you. We just need shipping address, no P.O. box. We need your shirt size confirmed, and we need to have a phone number so for the shipping. So that wraps up the contest for tonight. What do you think? Did you have a good time? Did you have a good time tonight, Robert? Oh, yeah, man. It was a blast. Re reliving the good tour. I'm ready to come back. Jesse said he's coming down. So I'm going to catch. I know he's got to drive through my area, so I'm going to catch a ride with him. You need to. And I, I sincerely appreciate you joining us tonight on such, on such short notice. And, and, you know, just proves that Ernie and I were just way off base knowing that we could pack this into a 90-minute show. So everyone keep in mind, part two of the tour, that's going to be next week. It's already confirmed. Our boy from yeah. Williston Audio Labs, Derek Williston, he's going to join us for that. So put that on your schedule next Tuesday, 730 Central Time, right here on the Kicker Facebook and YouTube channels. As always, it's my pleasure to say thank you to Mr. Robert Hi-Fi Vega. Look forward to seeing you on 12 Volt Talk and Reverse Polarity. If you guys aren't tuned into his shows, I highly recommend you check them out. Great content. I enjoy it myself. I recommend it. You should go check it out as well. Thank you for the time tonight. As always, it's myself, Kip Litzy. I'm here with Mr. Tim behind the cameras making it happen. And backstage, we've got Ernie. We've got Jeremy. Tonight, we've got Sandy, who's getting trained to come up to do a show. We've got Jacob Lucky. He's going to be coming in as well to take the place of Bill Frog. But tonight, we have Bill Frog back there doing everything for social. It's our sin sincere pleasure to say thank you for joining us tonight. Keep your comments rolling into socialkicker.com. From all the employees here at Stillwater Designs, we wish you a fantastic week. Be safe, have fun, and we will see you next Tuesday, 7.30 Central Time, right here on the Kicker Facebook and YouTube channels. Have a great week, everyone. Thanks for tuning in.